Well, good morning. Welcome to Train Baptist Temple. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, if you would, continue to look at your bulletins, look at the upcoming announcements, what's coming up this week, uh, what's, what's happening here at church. And then we'll, just a reminder, we do send out uh, weekly emails every Monday pretty much. If not, it'll be on Tuesday. But usually every Monday a, a reminder comes out just reminding you what's happening here in the church so you can stay up to date. And then, of course, don't forget that we have our church calendar, and you can always go there anytime, uh, our website, and fi find out what's going on, just so you can stay up with what's going on. There's a, there's a lot happening uh, this particular month, coming up in March as well, and just uh, a, a lot happening. So please, please, please check your calendars, check those emails, and stay up to date with what's going on. I want to read a set of scripture in, in uh, Philippians chapter 2. In verse 5, if you were here at Sunday school, maybe you heard it this morning, but it says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of a cross. Wherefore... God hath also highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and the things in heaven, and the things in earth, and the things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name, and uh, God, I pray that as Christians this morning, it would be our desire to have the mind of Christ. Uh, just to see how you were willing to be a, 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 a humbled servant, a, 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 a humble servant here uh, on this earth. God is, is an amazing example to us. Even as we are learning this morning in Sunday school, there's times that we're just selfish. We want what we want when we want it. But I God, I pray that we'd, we'd remove all of that when we come into this place and we'd just be here to, to, to humbly worship and serve our King. God, we love you and we thank you for this morning. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for the fact that you were obe obedient unto the death, even the death of the cross. And God, through that cross, through that blood, through, the, through uh, that perfect sacrifice, you made a way. You made an atonement. You made a payment for our sins. And now... Uh, we have life eternal awaiting us, God, and we're, we're so thankful and grateful for that. God, bless this service. Bless this time together. And we love you, and we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Will everyone please stay? From the depths of the sea.
Praise the Lord. God is so good.
treasure you found All right, praise the Lord Amen. Once again, welcome to Shreem Baptist Temple. Thank you so much for being here. Let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer and ask his blessing on this offering. Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. And uh, God, we do thank you for the, the forgiveness uh, that came through your precious blood. And, uh, not even as the last couple of lines said there in that song, Lord, that we, we would bear our cross uh, until it's time for us to go home, until you call us home, until you rapture us out of here, whatever comes first, Lord. Uh, just help us to live for you, uh, Lord. Help us to give for you. Help us to help us to 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 just be servants of of your uh, kingdom in a mighty way, God. I, I pray that you would take this offering, you would bless it uh, today, and uh, just beyond what we could even imagine, God. Uh, take what's given here and and, and expand it and use it uh, so that we could go out and share with more and more people the glorious good news of Jesus Christ, uh, that gospel, Lord. We thank you for. Uh, this opportunity to give back to you and pray that you would bless in a mighty way. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.
There you go. <laughs> All kinds of technical problems this morning, eh? <laughs> well, it's good to see y'all here this morning. Weather seemed to, uh, even though it's a little uh, maybe schizophrenic as far as Texas weather, <laughs> Uh, at least we're not the chance of sleet and, and snow, so I mean, at least right, not right now. So it's good to see you all. Um, I do want to say a couple things. I know Brother Jeffrey said some things. Uh, please be looking at your bulletins. We have uh, a lot of things coming up. One of those things in particular this weekend is our men's retreat. And uh, I know several guys said, hey, I'm going and sent me your shirt sizes. But if you haven't registered, we need you to go online and register. Uh, if you don't know about going online and registering uh, and you'd rather just do a check or cash, um, you can see me or Brother Jeffrey uh, at some point and uh, give us your name and, and uh, the money. And so it's going to be a, a great time. I know we haven't said a whole lot about it. It kind of jumped up on us pretty quick, but uh, we're going to the same place we went last year to Glen Rose, Texas. We're partnering with Legacy Baptist Church down the street. Uh, we're going to do some skeet shooting and... Um, paintballing for people who want to be involved in that, but there's also just chill, relaxation, fi uh, fishing, uh, stuff like that, as well as, of course, the, the lessons and the worship and stuff like that, stuff like that, stuff like that, stuff like that. I'm getting it all out right now. Um, that's that, and then after that is next weekend, the marriage seminar, or the couple seminar, I think is our seventh annual one. And so we want to invite all you married couples out to this, a good time of fellowship. It's also a time, uh, Friday night is a, a programmed kind of date night. We come in, have a, a short little lesson, and then a date night, and, uh, watching kids here if you want to take advantage of that. It was a good time just to, to go out and do that, and then come back Saturday morning and have a few lessons, and again, more fellowship time together with other Christian couples. So really want to encourage you to be there, so I don't need work in my marriage, praise God. We all need to talk to you after service, and uh, we will get some encouragement. No, I'm just playing. But it is a, it's a, it's a time uh, to be encouraged and strengthened, even if you don't need uh, work on your marriage per se. Uh, you can be an encouragement to others uh, there as well. So that's next weekend. Of course, we have you know, wings this week, outreach, all kinds of stuff. So 
Hopefully you're a part of that. If you have your Bibles, I want to encourage you to turn back over uh, to Luke chapter 20 or 21, and we're going to be, uh, well, in both. But uh, I um, love last week's message because it challenges, it challenges me, and it, hopefully it challenges you. Uh, the first point, if you have your notes there, uh, it says motive of the heart, and that's again uh, kind of the test that we see in our life. Why are we doing what we're doing? Uh, f- for a, a, a very simple question for us this morning is this, why are you here this morning? Why are you here? And again, we can, we can make it about a lot of things. We can even make it about ourselves. We can, we can you know, uh, well, I, I want this and I want that. But the reality and the truth of the matter is this, the motive of our heart should be driven by Him. He he is our everything, so we should be here to draw attention to Him. Everything in our life should draw attention to Jesus Christ, to focus on Him. And so when we look at the motive of our heart, that's what our lives should look like. I love Jesus Christ. That's the motive in my life and love. And again, that's what we saw is that God is still interested in our motives being right, and he's still interested in our motive being love. And so you see that in your notes, some of those things already filled out under point one, but some of the questions that I asked last week was this, why do we serve him? Many people in, in this church, and I, and I praise God for that. When we have our church worker meeting, we have you know, probably a hundred or more people there. And it's encouraging to see how, much, uh, how many people are involved because uh, you know, we teach in our new members class that every person has a place. Every person should be serving in some capacity. Um, So if you're here and you're just sitting, that's not God's intention for you. Uh, You have a place to be serving and encouraging other people uh, with the gifts that God's blessed you with, with the talents even that God's blessed you with. So you have a place in the body of Christ to serve. Um, And so, but the question is, why do you serve? Why are you doing what you're doing? Other questions we asked were, why do you maybe lead that ministry? Some people are given the responsibility of leading. Why do you lead? And some of the reasons why those questions are important to answer and make sure that we have the right motive is this because there's going to be trials that come along there's going to be difficult times that happen in our life we're going to have people maybe even come at us and and we feel attacked in some in some ways what's going to keep us faithful and what's going to keep us going is making sure that our motive is right you know if 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 i don't make sure that my heart stays right and my motive stays right then anything can come and knock me off track anything and so, again, the same thing in, in all of our lives is true. We've got to make sure our motives are right. I want to make sure that we get that before we move on. Make sure that uh, you, again, if you are here last week, remember that. Let that resonate. If you weren't here last week, the weather kept you or, or you were sick or out of town or something, or maybe you're a guest, uh, I really encourage you to look at the scriptures when you get time, when you get home, that we went through uh, there in your notes. And then look at those things. God is interested in making sure that we have the right motive of heart. Let's pray, and we're going to move on this morning. Father, thank you for this time. We thank you for allowing us to be here. God, we we praise you for what we've already been able to experience. And I I don't want it to just be an experience, Lord. Uh, I want it to be something that we have engaged you with already. Lord, worship from our hearts, uh, sincere uh, praises being given to you. And I pray that this encounter now, uh, would become even more real as your word is, is preached and as, as we focus on you, Lord, as we make you the center of our everything still in this service, uh, we ask that, that you would move in a supernatural way. God, we are, we're wanting you to move in our lives. Lord, I, I'm asking you for me. I'm asking you for us as a church. Uh, move now. Lord, maybe there's strongholds in some people's lives. Maybe there's uh, trials they're going through. Maybe there's difficulties. Maybe there's attacks going on and we need um, to see breakthroughs and and i pray that that would happen this morning that even as as we thought about the motive of our heart as we move forward in in this message this morning and we see these next few important points again we're praying that you would uh, just break through and and pierce the hearts and speak to us lord uh, what needs to be so can i pray that you would um, set me aside and, and simply use me as a vessel that uh, you would be exalted, Lord, uh, that your words would, would go forth and every single one of us would be instructed by your Holy Spirit. Yes. Lord, if there's someone here this morning that's lost, uh, I pray that there would be nothing that stands in their way. Uh, there would be no distraction. There would be no uh, interruption. There would be no 
uh, enemy attacking. There would be nothing that comes in the way of the gospel being heard and received, Lord. And we'll praise you for what you do. Lord, we'll, we'll thank you for it all. And we ask and pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have your Bibles, we're going to begin, uh, pick back up in verse 21 there. It should be on the screen. It says, And he looked, and he saw the rich men casting their gifts into the treasury. And look what verse, uh, verse 2 says. Um, it, it says this. It, it, and this is chapter 21, I'm sorry. And, and he saw also a certain poor widow. Casting in thither two mites. Now, if you're like me and, and, and you've been in church for a long time and maybe even heard this story or read through this story or heard messages on this story uh, countless times or even maybe taught this story, there's a chance that at some point in that time you have read through this or listened through this or, or whatever the case may be and, and just passed right over the reality of this woman's situation. Right? I mean, let's, let's be honest. We, we read the story, and she was a poor widow, and she cast in her two mites. And we, we think of her like that because there's not everybody in this room is in that place, that they're poor and they're a widow. And we're going to find out more what this meant, what she, what she was doing. But think about this. It says that there were these rich men all around, and they were casting in all of this money. They were emptying out their pockets and, and into the treasury and... and and people are like, wow, man. And, and you can imagine what's going on. They're, they're standing back and they're looking at the, the beauty of the temple and, and all the things that are going on. And they're thinking, wow, thank God for those rich people. You know? <laughs> thank God that they're, they're, they're dumping in all that money so that we can have this beautiful temple and it can be arrayed and, and, and all this, the, the grounds around the place is taken care of. And, and again, that's the way the human mind thinks. That, you know, we, we think... And there's a tangible, there's a reality to that tangibility. And, and, and what, what I'm saying is it takes money for things to go in this world. We realize that. But we also have to realize something, that God needs none of our money. He, he, he needs none of our money. He, he doesn't have to have a dime of it. I mean, a God who can, who can take the dust that he created and form us, he doesn't need our money. I mean dust to the ground he doesn't need that right. i mean if he wanted to do something he could just speak it into being just like he did at creation so it doesn't need our money however he uses it he still uses he was using it then and he still uses it now but there's a lot there's a way bigger point to our money than what we often tag to it but jesus is is observing this and he's seeing these rich guys casting all this money, their riches, I mean, it's, it's happening. Wow. Look at that check they wrote. Man, look at, look at that, you know. People were looking around. Jesus wasn't doing that. People were noticing. But Jesus also looks aside over there, and she probably humbly walks over and casts in her two mites. And listen to what Jesus said. This is a truth. I say unto you that this poor widow has cast in more than they all. She's cast in more than all of them. And can you imagine the disciples and the people sitting around listening to this, this message? Because, you know, Jesus has already been accused. We're getting close to the end now. He's already been accused of being crazy. There's people that are trying to, to you know, the, the, the religious people are trying to, uh, to put him in jail and, and kill him. He, he's already thought by many people as a crazy person. And so when, when he starts speaking in, in monetary terms, just like us today, I mean, if somebody comes up here and lays, lays a, a block of gold on, uh, you know, on, on the podium here, and then somebody comes over here and lays two, two pennies on, on this side, everybody would be staring at this big block of gold. <laughs> like, I wonder how much that's worth. Wow, they're get, how much does that weigh? That's going so much. And, and we would look over here and say, well, I mean, even if they got thrown, those two pennies got thrown in the trash, I mean, who would really miss it? That's kind of the mentality that we have today. But Jesus, he says, look, this lady over here, she, she gave this and she gave more than every single one of these rich guys combined. And these guys are like, <laughs> trying to follow you we're trying to follow you 
But I mean, look, how is that possible? I mean, tangibly, of course, he has a, a spiritual uh, meaning behind that. Again, it goes even back to the first point that we talked about last week, the motive of the heart. But he explains on in verse 4, because all these have of their abundance cast in to the offerings of God. Listen to what he says, though, next. But she of her penury, her poverty, has cast in all the living that she had. She, this, she was a poor widow. She had no husband. She had, she had no way to make a living, really, of her own. I mean, she maybe tried to put some things together in the marketplace, sold them for what she could, but she also had to eat, she had to live. And, and so it was the reality of her life. She had nothing, she had no one, and yet she still had it in her heart to go and to give to God everything she had. It was a perspective that she had, but it was a heart perspective that she had. I believe she understood what God had given to her. Now, most of us in a spoiled 2018 America today, we look at our circumstances and say, woe is me. I, I, I just don't know if I can do anything for God because my circumstances are so bad. This woman was a poor widow. And yet she still said, you know what? I need to give God my all. He, he, he deserves it all. He, it's all his anyways. And these guys were thinking, uh, let's see, I've got, um, I don't have cash. I would do the illustration if I had cash. Yeah, I cash. But, you know, let's see, I got a couple hundreds, three, oh, five, six, eight, nine, two, nine, two. okay, um, okay, I'll give this much. Out of, the, out of the riches. This is what I can do out of this. Instead of saying, what do I have in my pocket? Okay, here we go. I'm just going to put it all in. So that's what the widow did. But I, th I think the widow probably, she, and this is just my, my, my take based on Scripture, is she knew what she had. And she knew that what it was going to cost her. And she knew what she couldn't do after she gave. And she still trusted God. She still wanted to give to God. She still had that desire because, again, of the perspective of her mind and her heart. And let's not, make, let's not confuse this. Don't walk away from this morning thinking, man, Brother Kyle was preaching all about money. Come on. Look, let's just get real. Money has a lot to do with controlling our life. Amen. It does. And if we want to spiritualize and say, oh, no, that church is about No, 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 no. We make our lives all about money. The church isn't making it. God's not making it. It's not about that. We make our lives about money. It's just when somebody starts talking about our money, that it becomes wrong. The widow didn't see it like that, though. The widow was like, it's, my life is God's? Hey, here it is. My husband was God's? Everything. Every blessing. Every good and perfect gift has come from above. So it's all God's anyways. And so when she thought about what she might not could have done, if she gave those two mites and all that kind of stuff, she, she still said, you know what? He's my God. Yes. And he has my trust. Great. And even when I give this, I have absolute confidence in him. That is, he provided a husband for me and took him away. And as he provided substance for me to eat and water for me to drink, and, and things, so I, I trust him still to do that. You know, the song that was sang, was it last week or the week before, uh, by Brother Sean, based on, and I know Brother Nosh has sang it before, uh, based on the, the, the story of, of the three Hebrew children um, in, in Babylon, even if, even if he doesn't, even if he doesn't deliver, even if, even if God doesn't restore unto me onefold, twofold, threefold, tenfold, of what I've given to him, even if, even if he doesn't, even if I give to him and I, and I continue to be in poverty, I will still give to him because he's worthy. He, he, he's still worthy of my trust, my confidence, my reliance of everything I could give, every word I could speak, it wouldn't be worthy, but he's, I, I could give that to him, every praise, every song, every, every dime, every penny, everything, every second of my life, I, he deserves it. 
And so point number two this morning that I want us to really understand, number one was the motive of a heart. That was an important, uh, uh, important uh, subject that we need to, to get straight. Uh, but the second thing is this, the investment of the life. Investment of the life. Luke chapter 12, we've already covered this, but in verse 15 it says a man, basically does, his life doesn't consist of the abundance of the things that he has. Our, our, our life, when we, when we, that's, but that's the way our society looks, right? I mean, why, do, why, why are there 15 different um, Hollywood entertainment shows on? Like they have it in the morning, they have it in the afternoon, they have it in the evening. For what? So that you can, you, you, the, the culture can keep up with what the rich and famous are doing. Why? Isn't that, isn't that interesting? I mean, and it draws us in. It can draw us in. What is going on? I'm trying to think of a famous person right now. What's going on with somebody? I don't know. O.J. Simpson. No, that's a bad one. <laughs> but that's what happens. Like, they draw us in. What's going on with them? Like, I, I, I start thinking of people like that. It's, it goes to sports. So I'm trying to think of, like, actors and stuff, but it's not working. But um, anyways, you know, we, we get drawn into what these people are doing. Why? Because, oh, and they have this, and they do that, and they live like this, and, and, and it's drama and drama and drama. I can't stand drama. Amen. Like, I, I, I turn on the TV, and, and, and if, it, if it has something to do with drama, I'm like, oh, it just drives me crazy. Like, that's not... Look, I've, I'm, the Bible says that I'm a child of God, and, and, and I'm, I'm supposed to be a peacemaker. Uh, the Bible says that blessed are the children of God, for they should be called uh, peacemakers. Yeah, they should be peacemakers. Um, that we, we have the peace of God in us. We should love peace. And so when, when we love drama, look, I'm not trying to get on a soapbox, and, but if it's speaking to you, if you're like, oh, no, I'll watch soap operas, you know. Look, what you do between you and God is between y'all, Okay. But look, just if, if you embellish drama, there's something wrong. And you say, oh, I disagree with you. That's cool. I mean, but I'm just saying drama is not something that should be a part of Christians' lives. And it comes to us. It happens to us. And, and, and we live in this world full of drama. But man, to invoke it, to embellish it, to, to live in it is just not something uh, we should do. But, but we have to realize that the world is telling us something about our life that's contrary to what God's word tells us about our life. And that's what Jesus is even honing in on right here. I want to just think about this for a second. From the very beginning of time, in the garden, and when I say very beginning of time, what I'm saying is when God said, let there be light, there's the sun, there's the moon that's going to govern the night, there, there's the earth, and, and, and he called the day, day, or the light, day, and, and the night, dark night. Um, that was time. God created time before it was just eternity. And so from the beginning of time when he introduced that, and then when he said, you know what? Not that he didn't have an eternal plan. I'm just putting this in, in man's terms. Now's the time to create man. I've had this plan all along. Now's the time to create him. Created the earth, created the sun, moon, stars, all this kind of stuff. Now I'm going to create man. Somebody I can walk with. Somebody I can fellowship with. My, my prized creation that will, will, will love me. And, and, and yes, the trees in, in their glory and the way that I designed them, uh, they will, will give me praise just in, in the very nature of their design. And, 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 and uh, the stars will do the same. All of creation do. But, but I am ready now to create man that will return to me. By his own desires. That's good. Not by the design of, of, of what I said to be the trees will, the seed will die in the ground and water and, and, and sun and food uh, nutrients will, will cause it to grow and then it will bring forth fruit and, and, and other stuff. It, it's done that just as I have said, but I, I'm ready to create man who will, who will walk with me in the cool of the day and share with me the things that I already know about him, but I, I just want to hear anyways. Because I love him and, 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 and I love the rela relationship we have. And God de determined to, to create us. He made a huge investment. And so, well, yeah. I mean, but like, wh he gave, what did he do? I mean, he invested life. 
Think about this. We call it our lives, right? That's what happens. It's my life, my life, life. But it's God's life. He's the, he is life. Jesus, Jesus said that. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. So in the very beginning, God says, I'm going to make a deposit into mankind. I'm going to invest something into this prized creation that, that I, want, I want back. I, I want this interaction back. I want this relationship back with them. And so God, in that moment, invested life into us. When did he do that? The Bible says when he breathed into the nostrils of Adam the breath of life, that man became a living soul. Our, our, the souls of mankind came alive when God invested life into us. You and I are sitting here because of that investment. It, it still permeates mankind. The reason why we're able to see babies uh, conceived and then born and then all of us came the same exact way. I mean, living, sitting here in these seats today is because of an investment that God made thousands of years ago after he created man from the dust of the ground and he breathed into nostrils of mankind life. And it's still filling our souls today. Now, we realize that sin came along and man became a dying soul. He was dead in a sin. Dead in trespasses and sins, the Bible says. But we have what we have because of an investment of God. And so I believe it's things like that that this widow understood that I have no life. I have nothing except for God. So it's all his anyways. This, this day, these, these resources, m m my life, everything, it's all his. So these two mites are his. If I had all the gold that these guys were throwing in the pit, that would all be his anyways. All of it. Not just what I could afford or out of, out of, my, uh, you know, out of my riches. It's all his. So the big question for us today then is this, what are we doing with this priceless, and listen, truly once in a lifetime investment that we call life? What are we doing with it? Well, I know a lot of us are getting up and going for, for eight to 10, 12, sometimes 14, 16 hours a day and just wearing ourselves out for those riches, that treasure, that earthen treasure. God's invested this, this eternal, this, this value of, of, of life into us. And those of us who have realized that, that we were dead in trespasses and sin, realized that we were lost, realized that Jesus, God in the flesh, died on a cross and, and shed his blood, and that blood is sufficient to cover all of our sins, the things that we've, the lying, the stealing, uh, the, 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 the immorality that's in our life, that the blood of Jesus is, is sufficient to cover, cover all of our sins. Those of us who have accepted Jesus as our Savior, and not only that, as our Lord, and have been forgiven of all our sins, we have received eternal life. We, have, we are no longer dead, but are alive in Christ Jesus. Those of us in that place who realize that we have life because it's not that he only died on the cross and, and that he shed his blood to pay for our sins, but they put him in a grave and three days later he rose again victorious over death. Not just over sin, but also over death in the grave. And we have life through him. And so those of us who have this eternal life, those of us who have a relationship with a God who Thousands of years ago in the garden said, now it's time to make my prized creation, as I said a while ago. That creation that will, will give back to me uniquely, unlike any other part of my creation. That creation, now it's time to do, I'm going to breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. Those of us who have a relationship with him through faith in Jesus Christ, us. Yes. What are we doing with the investment that God has given to us? What is it about? It's real easy for us, all of us, to make it about the here and now only. You just don't know the stresses or the demands that I have. But listen, you have a priceless once 
in a lifetime, truly once in a lifetime investment right now, how are you spending it? These guys over here that were out of their riches were giving what they could afford. They were thinking about, well, I've still, I need to do this, I need to do that. This lady said, it's his. He gave his life for mine. Here, here's my life. How are we investing ourselves? I looked at us, looked it up right before I came in here. The average life expectancy of Americans is in 2015, um, 78.74 years. Now, women are a little bit more um, than men, but about 78 uh, years on this earth. That is the equivalent of 28,000 something days, right? So then I was like, wow, that, that's a lot of days. Right? And then I thought, but what about, I mean, because that's from birth. So what about those of us who are further along? Come on, preacher. What about those of us who are about halfway, Free. according to the average? Because we realize, and I want to stop and say something, uh, just because the Lord just impressed my heart to do so. The tragedy that happened in Florida. Some people are, you know, really struggle with that, uh, and I struggle with that. It broke my heart, you know, um, to think about uh, how evil manifests itself sometimes, and and the sicknesses and the, the darkness and, and stuff like that. Uh, but you know what? Anytime something like that happens, you know what it does to me. It makes me realize that God's still redeeming people. That's, that's what it is. Because there's so much darkness and sin in the world, it's, it's evident that God is still redeeming people. Because if not, we wouldn't have that. We would live in a peaceful, perfect world if there weren't still sinners. But because there's still sinners and evil is still manifesting itself and the enemy is still rampantly trying to destroy lives, because that's what the Bible said, he's come to kill, steal, and destroy. And so it, 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 when I see things like that, it reminds me that there's still such a great desperate need for people to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it then reminds me that the church, that's the reason why we're still here. We have the responsibility, the privilege, the amazing, because there are people out there that are lost and deceived and in darkness and hurting, and, and they need to hear the gospel to deliver them from those wicked and evil thoughts and motives of, of killing and destroying lives that the enemy has motivated them with. They need to hear the truth. That's why we're here. To be the messengers, to be the ambassadors, to be the light that shines in the darkness. And so, you know, you think about life, average life, 78 years for us in America. But that's not guaranteed. Because it could be, unfortunately, like what happened this week in Florida with some teenagers or young adults. The reality of life is that it's extremely fragile and it's extremely short compared to eternity. And it's, and it's not guaranteed. And so with the seriousness of our lives, see, it's easy for us, as long as our days go about the way that we expect them to go about, like we're all of us expect at this point when we leave the service that it'll go probably eat lunch at home, we'll go eat lunch somewhere else. And then we're going to do whatever, hopefully spend time with family. That's the reason why we're not having service this evening is to, to re be refreshed and you know, all of our workers and, and spend time with family. And We all expect to do that. And then at some point we're going to go to sleep tonight and expect in the morning to get up and go to work. Or if you're a school teacher and you go to school and you got the day off, you know, all those things. That's the way, that's, our, our minds are programmed. This is how my life is going. Nobody, I don't think, in this room is expecting today I'm going to die. Come on. We don't think like that. That's right. We don't think that, that just maybe, maybe we will get out on that road and something crazy might happen to us and not somebody else. But that's the reason. I'm not trying to be like, 
you know, grim or, or, or doom and gloom or like, great, came to church, I was not lifted up, you know. <laughs> Left that church thinking I might die in an accident, you know. <laughs> but the reality is that it could happen. Life is so short, so fra fragile, not guaranteed uh, uh, in this life. Now, those of us who are saved, we have guaranteed eternal life, absolutely. No matter what happens to me in this life, if it were a car accident, I'm not dying, I'm going, I'm living. I'm, the, the Bible says that, Jesus said, uh, though a man may uh, die, yet shall he live. It's just a, a, a temporal, it's a door that we have to go through. Death is for those of us who are saved. But how are we investing ourselves? Are you investing your life into eternal things? Someone once said, if your investments are limited to this earth, you are the world's worst investor. If, if your investments are limited to this earth. So there's a lot of people that make sure that their savings account's good. That's okay. There's a lot of people that make sure that their 401k is good. That's good. Okay. There's a lot of people that make sure that their, their house is taken care of and their cars are taken care of. There are a lot of people that do those things and those things aren't bad, except if that's the only thing that you're invested or worried about. It's good to invest in your health. We, we, we need to use the, the time and the, 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 the vehicles that God has given to us to his glory. We need to make sure that we try to take care of ourselves so that we can invest in this life for his kingdom. That's just the truth. The Bible says that, that um, look, bodily exercise profiteth little. It may only profit a little, but it does help. And so I don't like to exercise. I don't love it. I do it. Even if it's, a, you, hey, go walk, do something, get out, walk with the kids, uh, breathe fresh air, get sunlight, the things that God's created. God's given us this life. We need to make sure that we're investing the right way for his kingdom. Again, I said it's good to invest financially. If the Lord allows the time, you know, you stop your working career and you're able to take care of you and your family after that time's over, that's a wise thing to do. There's nothing wrong with that. Because there's, you know, some people, well, this is the kind of job I do and at some point I'm gonna get too old to do this job or to do something maybe i'm incapable of doing it so again to prepare for those things that'd be that'd be wise but please hear this because we're only going to get one point this morning as well there's nothing more important in this world than to invest in the spiritual there's nothing more important in this world I don't, I don't care how much money is in your 401k. I don't care how much you think that it's going to take for you to survive after retirement. I don't care any of those things because in a moment, it could all be over. And if all of your effort and energy and investment was for that, that, that savings, that 401k, that retirement, that, that all those things, and you never thought, very, at least very long, my neighbor's lost. I'm going to hit my knees and pray that God would open a door so that I could give them the gospel and they could see and invest spirits. I, I'm going to be faithful in church because th there may be some person that sits next to me that, that has a question about what the preacher's preaching about. And, and they, may, they may lean over to me and say, what is, why does the blood save us? Why can the blood forgive us? And if I'm not there for them... They may leave this building with that question and never accept Jesus Christ because I wasn't where I was supposed to be. I, I, was, I was busy about my activities and my things and the things in this world and investing and spending for the things of this world only that I, I didn't think about the importance of investing in the spiritual above even the worldly. How could that widow give everything she had? Because she was thinking about the spiritual investment. Not the worldly investment. See, the, the world, the guys, everybody around there looking at these people gawking at all the money that these rich guys were throwing in. Like, wow, man, it's amazing. This is, this is great. Look at all that money. And those guys who were giving, they were going to like, 
again, like I said, let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two, and woo, whew, now my pocket's light. That was their motivation. Or maybe it was their motivation to say, hey, uh, you know, for 20 years now, I've been, you just see me every time that we come and we cast our gifts into the treasury, I've been given a thousand pounds. I've been given a thousand dollars. Where's my plaque? Why'd you go with tan chairs? Why couldn't you do purple chairs? Purple's my favorite color. You know how much money I've given to this temple? It's a royal color. But that's the, the, the mindset sometimes of, of what, not this widow. She, God had invested life. God had, had blessed her and, and invested in her, even in a husband uh, that she could be a helpmate to, that she could, she could live and serve the Lord with. And, and for some reason, maybe beyond her understanding, God took her husband home before her and, and left her a widow and left her this, in this state. But she still said, you know what? It's all God's. Yep. It's all his. Break. Every bit of it. Even my life. Because I see it's about the spiritual. That's what it's about. And see, so when we can see our lives as investments like that, then we can begin to look at our tangible and our physical, even our monetary investments in the same exact way. That's why it's not hard to tithe. That's why that's a joy. The Lord loves the cheerful giver. That's why it's a joy to tithe. That's why it's a joy to give to missions and to the building program. It's, it's a joy to do those things because why? It's all God's anyways. And it's a spiritual investment into not only my relationship with him, because look, I'm not going to rob God, as Malachi says. I'm not going to take from God everything that he's blessed to me. I'm not going to do that, first of all. But second of all, if I could give back anything to God, why would I not? It's all from him anyways, the abilities, the opportunity, uh, all those things. Living in America, it's all his. I mean, he, he, blessings, 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 blessings. So to give back a portion, that's a joy. That's, that's a joy. So I think that's where the, the widow was coming from. It's a joy to give to God. But whoa, 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 wait, wait, sister, um, is that all you have? Absolutely. Well, how, how are you going to, well, I mean, are you going to go eat to lunch after church? You know, <laughs> what are you going to buy? How are you going to, well, you don't have any money left. I trust the Lord. It's all his. True that. No. But the Bible says this. What does man gain if he tries to save his life and lose his soul? What if, what if he tries to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? God's concerned with the heart. He's concerned where our heart is. Again, let me take us back again. He's concerned with that precious creation that he said, this is going to be unique from everything else. I'm going to form him from the ground. And in him will I breathe the breath of life. And, and man will be a living soul, not just a living being, not just, not just a, a, a mammal or, or, or a reptile, not, not just that but a living soul. I want that interaction with him. He's concerned with us, realizing the investment that he made into us. He's saying, God, you, you have my all. You have my life. You've given me life. You've, you've given me my wife, my kids, my, 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 my job, the ability, the health. You've given me all these things, and God, everything is yours. It's the same place that God took Abraham to, Amen. right? Amen. Take, him, take Isaac and, and go up to the mountain. Yeah, pray, okay. <laughs> That's good. You need to prepare a sacrifice. Yeah. Why would God do that? Why would God test Abraham? Because Abraham needed to come to a place where he trusted God wholly and realized that Isaac was a pl promised blessing from God. He was not God. Isaac was not God. He was a blessing from God. And listen, I say that because of this. That's what happens in our lives. We take our kids, 
you're my God. We take our spouse, you're my God. We take our job, you're my God. We, we, we take our stuff, these are my gods. No. All of them are blessings from God. He is God. We, we serve him alone, N- not those things. Not, we don't live for those things. We steward those things. We, we handle those things as blessings from God. That's why our kids are precious to us. Our spouse is precious to us. Our, the, the, the blessings even in this world to be able to work and provide for our family, all blessings from God. All blessings from God. And we can see it like that then we can have the same heart and I believe commendation and reward from God one day just as the widow had before Jesus that day. She got it right. When we stand before God one day, if we have the same heart mindset and, and, and live our lives the same way that that poor widow who cast in her two mites and say, listen, I just don't think that, that, that my $10 a week would make a big deal. Look, it could be $10,000 and it wouldn't make a big deal if your heart's not right. If it's not given out of the, the right reason. You say, well, I just don't think my, my, my teaching, you know, nursery Sunday school class is, is, is a real big investment. You're right. If you're not doing it with the right heart, it won't. But if you're doing it with the right heart, you could be scrubbing the toilets or you could be, you could be teaching a Sunday school class to that nursery that they don't really understand everything, but you're speaking the word of God and singing songs about Jesus to them. You're, you're in, the, in, in the bathroom and, and cleaning those toilets and, and, and washing those floors that, that guests that may not know Jesus come in and, and they, they go to use that bathroom and it's clean and it's ready and they say, this is, this is an okay place. I'll stay and listen to what they have to say. Versus walking there and being, ugh, I, ugh I'm, I'm leaving. <laughs> I don't want to stay here. They don't even clean their toilets. This, you know. <laughs> See, it's with a right heart. God can use where we're coming from. So whatever ministry, whatever resource, whatever those things are, when we have the right heart, again, it goes back to point number one. When the motive of our heart is right, then we can see the investment of life for what it is. God's not only concerned with the, the quantity He's more concerned with the quality because he knows that when the quality is there, the quantity, he can do whatever with the quantity. See, here's where we get messed up, though, in our selfish, self-centered American lives. So he's saying, if I have money, I shouldn't give because it was a poor widow that was given all she had, and she could do that, but... And I've got a lot of things to pay for. And I got a lot of money, but I got a lot of stuff to pay for. So, and God's not concerned about, Brother Kyle said it, he's not concerned with the quantity. So, I mean, I've got this much money, but maybe I'll just give this little amount of money. In our, again, we rationalize, what can I afford? It's not about that this and again whether we're talking about money or your time or or your abilities your service to god anything it that's what it's at what can i afford i don't have time to do this i don't have time to be a part of that i i, I don't know i can't or afford or whatever time talent and treasure the quality Why would this widow not cast in all that she had when God had sent all that he had right before her? Did you get that? It was Jesus watching her. How, how do you think that would have made her, her feel? Think about that. When she walked up there and, and, and she, God had given his only son who was about to go to the cross and die, lay down his life for her. And as she gets up there and she's like, I got two. Um, 
I, I would really like to do this. Okay, so God, I'm going to give you this. Maybe next time I'll, I'll do both. I'll give you all. And Jesus is watching. God in the flesh, come to die, to give his all. God giving his all for her right there. And she says, I only can do this much for you, God. But that's the same mindset that we have sometimes. And, and again, please don't think that it's only about money. It includes money, but it, again, it includes our time. It includes our talent. It includes our service. It includes all those things. Like, God, I really don't have time to, to tell them about you. I really don't have time to, to be faithful like that. Or God, I really don't have time. He sent his own, he gave his all. His all. He didn't hold back, well, I'm going to cover 95% of your sins. Not all of them. And I'm not going to tell you which ones, you know. Live in fear your whole life, you know. He didn't do that. Amen. Amen. He said, I'm giving my all. And it will cover all. Amen. It will cover all. So why in this investment of life to us do we try to barter or negotiate what we can or will or can't afford or, you know, to, again, whether it's money or whether it's our time or our service for the kingdom, for the king, we, we, we bar, I can't, I can't, I don't have time, I don't have this, I don't have the money, I don't have that. It's all his. He gave his all. The widow got it. She got it. He gave his all. I'll give my all. Somebody might ask as the musicians make their way, I mean, what else could that widow have taken? I mean, what, what else? I mean, she lost her husband. She didn't have any money. She was constantly scorned and rejected because she was a widow. She was an outcast from society because of her, st her standing. She wasn't accepted. She wasn't a part of the cool people. She wasn't a part of what everybody wanted to be a part of. People looked at her and looked down at her and, 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 and even uh, didn't even notice her casting in the amount of money that she was casting in. Her life, by, by human standards, by the world standards, probably was like, Ooh, she, <laughs> she might just need to go be with her husband. Not her. God's still filling my lungs with air. Amen. And he's still giving me, if only two mites. That's good, two mites. That's so I'll give it all to him. Amen. I'll give him the two mites. I'll give him the breath in my lungs. I'll give him my time here at this temple. I, 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 will, I will give it all to him. Because he gave all to me. Again, even going back to the very beginning of the garden. When he said, and life and man became a living soul. I, I want to encourage you to think that this woman, her service wasn't conditional based on her feelings. Her, her giving to God wasn't based on her circumstances even. We know that because she was a poor widow and she gave her all. Her, her, her investment wasn't based off of her own comfort. Well, if I do this, then, then I won't be able to have this. It wasn't based off that. It wasn't based off how good her finances were, how bad her finances were, how good her relationship was, or how bad her relationship was. Her faithfulness wasn't conditional upon any of these things. But her faithfulness and her giving was reflective of God's faithfulness and God's giving. And the challenge this morning for us is that. Ask that Let's ask ourselves that question. Is my faithfulness to God and my giving to him in everything, time, talent, treasure, service, is it reflective of how he has given and how faithful he is to me? Well, probably not. Let's change that then. Let's respond to the word of God this morning, seeing how Jesus used these two examples even today to remind us what's important in this life. 
It's only a short time. I looked it up, 78, 78 and whatever, three quarters years, average lifespan, 28,000 days. So I did a, just an interesting thing for myself. I had to do it twice because I thought the error was in the calculator. A little slow on the math. 78 minus 39. Enter. 39 stayed on the screen. Many of you don't get it either. It's half. Halfway. I thought, oh, wow. If I live the average lifespan, half. 14,000 more days. But if I don't, and if it's tomorrow, I only have today. I only have right now. And so do you. That's all we all have right now. And so I pray that we would see this and say, you know what? God has invested his all in my life. He gave his only son. He shed the only blood that could cover my sin. He rose from the grave, gave me the life. He is the only way, the truth, and the life. He's given everything to me. God, help me live my life, not holding anything back, not, not reserving anything for me, but investing all for you and your kingdom, because you are my God. Not my job, as much as I love my wife, not my wife, as much as I love my kids, not my kids. You are my God, and I will give you my all. Let's make that commitment together. Amen. Father, let's pray. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you again for this opportunity, and Lord, reminder challenge, conviction. Lord, I know it's convicted my heart again uh, this morning. Lord, I thank you for these sermons that go like this, that I plan to get it all accomplished in one, and you've got a different plan, and because it, it gets preached to me over and over again for a few weeks, and it's just a great reminder for myself, and I thank you for that, God. And I pray that you would help all of us remember that our motive, the motive of our heart needs to be right. And as we saw this morning, the investment of the life that you've given to us needs to be right. It's so important. God, you've given your all for us. Help us to respond in the right way. We see this poor widow, and she's nameless, God. None of us know her name. But I know one day we'll see her there in your kingdom. And she has a testimony for all time. From, from the time that you walked on this earth, God, this, this woman has a testimony. And I pray that's the way our lives would be. Uh, my name doesn't have to be known. Our names, doesn't, they don't have to be known. But help us just to make a mark for your kingdom because we too are investing our all for you. God, that our lives look like this widow, this poor widow's life. And we realize you gave us all, and so we t in turn give you all. Lord, help us make that kind of mark and make a difference in this community and in this world while we have time left in this world. Lord, I pray that you move now. We'll praise you for all you do in Jesus' name. Amen. If you'll stand for a few minutes this morning. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling.
Praise the Lord. Thank you all so much uh, for being here again. Don't forget, we do not have evening service this evening. I see one part of Vaughn family, so we'll wait on y'all. But we have Miss Krisha Real there. And uh, we, this family, uh, they joined uh, last month. And it's been um, one thing right after the other that has kept me distracted from the end of services. Or the Tim Lee, different end of the service, uh, baptisms. And so, uh, but they, they joined and uh, are official members, but we want to have them come and uh, uh, be received by you guys and, and stuff like that. But we'll wait on the Vaughn family. It, it, I know y'all want to do that together. Uh, but Miss Christian, if you want to come down or it's up to you, or if you want to wait, there you go. So she's coming down and I want to ask after we dismiss, you guys come by and give her the right hand of fellowship and a right, or two arm uh, hug. Um, uh, welcome her in, and as soon as Brother Dale is, is uh, here, he's working today, I guess, um, then we'll, we'll let y'all hug them. But they're official members. They've been that way for a few weeks now, but uh, let's, let's uh, welcome them in like that. And I think that's it, right? I'm not forgetting anything. Praise the Lord. All right. Brother Jeffrey, if you'll come and dismiss us.
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you and praise you for uh, this day, for this message, God. And if um, all of us, Lord, we've all fallen short of giving you our all from time to time. and uh, God, we're sorry for that. And we pray that you would help us today as, as you've given us one more day, uh, one more breath to go out and, and live for you. I pray that we'd leave this place on fire, excited, encouraged by what we've heard here today. And then we'd go and share it with someone. We'd go and pour in and invest in other people's lives. The gospel, or maybe those Christians who aren't here today, we can uh, just share with them the truths we've learned uh, and be excited about it and be all in and, and give you our all. Um, God, we, we've signed up to, 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 to give you our everything, and I pray that we would be doing that. God, I pray that we, we would leave this place going hard for you today. We love you, and we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.